Welcome to our webinar on embroidering with frosted mats, Madeira's fade-resistant matte finish embroidery thread. With 13 locations throughout the U.S., Madeira USA has customers in all time zones. So good morning or good afternoon to you, depending on the state you're calling from. My name is Alice Wolf. I head up Madeira's marketing department. Joining me for marketing are Nancy Minnie <clears throat> and Sarah Westfield. Both of them have embroidered with frosted mats, so they will be sharing information with you and helping to answer some of your questions. Sarah actually has a few technical pointers to make sure everyone gets the most out of this webinar. Hello, everyone. You may have questions about frosted mat during the webinar today. We do have the questions pane available for any of those questions you may have. Please type your questions into the text box and press the send button. I will be answering some of your questions through the question pane, and we'll, we will be answering them verbally as well during the webinar. Any questions that we do not get to today, we will be email, emailing out a Q&A to everyone from the session after the webinar. Thank you, Sarah. <clears throat> um, well, Sarah, Nancy, and I are in New Hampshire, Madeira's headquarters. Off campus, we asked two additional people to join in as leaders in our webinar. Paulette Bell, embroidering for nearly 30 years, once an editor of Stitches magazine, and currently a freelance educator for Brother International's Home Appliance Division, is coming to us from Colorado. She's on standby to answer some questions and actually has discovered a unique application of frosted mat thread, which she will share a little bit later. Linda Morgan is a partner and owner of Stitch and Chicks Embroidery in Dallas, Texas. She's a customer of Madeira who's a great fan of working with frosted mats. So we've asked her to join in and help share her enthusiasm and some of her techniques. We will provide contact information for both of our guests at the end of the webinar. Okay, so we're going to get started. This webinar will cover the unique properties of frosted mats as well as the common uses and best practices for this thread. We have some takeaway points for you or goals that we hope that by the end of this webinar, you feel that you've learned. We hope you will be able to leave the webinar with a greater understanding of the benefits of using this thread, of digitizing for it correctly and embroidering with it to the best results, or at least curious enough to give it a try in your business. And ultimately, we'd like to remove <coughs> the fear factor of trying something new. One important point, the very first one that we'd like to make, is that frosted mat remains the only true mat finish embroidery thread on the market today. <clears throat> While others may claim to carry such a thread, theirs is often a cotton-based sewing thread, which is not really intended for embroidery, but used for construction and straight lines. This makes sewing thread really not suitable for the delicate, intricate work of embroidery. Frosted mat is 100% polyester thread that contains a ceramic ingredient. This special ingredient allows for a smooth, crisp, matte finish, unlike that of a fibrous or, or hairy cotton thread. Sometimes embroiders will use a sewing thread to achieve a matte finish look. Sewing thread does not run as smoothly as embroidery thread. Frosted mat was developed specifically to achieve this look and for running on high-speed embroidery machines. And if you look at the image on your screen now, you can see the difference of what a magnified version of the two threads will look like. The ceramic ingredient that's found in frosted mat is what gives it its most appealing attribute of all, its extreme fastness to light. It is also a contributing factor to frosted mats notable vivid colors. Sometimes we call them high definition colors. For items that are exposed to sunlight continuously, such as boat cushions or patio furniture covers, frosted mat will hold up better than any other embroidery thread, rayon or polyester. Through rigorous testing at an independent lab, frosted mat received a 7 out of 10 rating for its color fastness meaning that color will not change when embroidery is left in direct sunlight for one year. To put this into perspective, the average embroidery thread on the market receives approximately a less than 5 out of 10 rating, leaving its ability to hold color before the embroidery begins to fade at less than half a year when exposed continually to direct sunlight. 
The extreme color fastness of frosted mat is particularly attractive to anyone embroidering on items to be used outdoors in the sun. These items may include ski jackets in the winter, golf apparel and accessories, swimwear, patio furniture and boat cushions in the summer, and fashion boots in the fall. Resort wear in any climate can benefit from this attractive feature. As with many specialty threads, there are a few tricks of the trade to get best results from embroidering a frosted mat. I'm going to ask Nancy, who's actually embroidered with it, to explain some of those to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, while, frost, um, sorry, while frosted mat is considered to be a 40 weight thread, it is slightly thinner than the standard 40 weight rayon or polyester. So we recommend adjust, adjusting the density for large fill areas and for the light color designs embroidered on dark fabric. <clears throat> if you use an outside source for digitizing, be sure to let them know the areas where you want to fill, uh, where you're going to fill in with frosted mat. We recommend that they set the density at a 3.5 with a maximum of up to 4.0. Frosted mat will stitch out as efficiently as your standard 40 weight thread. So swap on a comb frosted mat and use a standard 7511 or 659 needle and rest assured that your embroidery machine will run well at high speed. Well, we've covered the, the biggest utilitarian attributes of frosted mat. It's also an excellent addition for creative work. And this is some, an area where Linda can really address this better than, than I can. Um, the matte finish creates a realistic tone-on-tone -tone effect for a subtle embossed look on linens and garments, and mixing in frosted matte with classic rayon, polyester, or metallics will give a sense of texture to your design. Um, it, on your screen now, you see two stitch outs. The cupcake that's on the right was used as a giveaway um, at trade shows that Madeira attends throughout the year. We mix frosted matte with a metallic thread and with some rayon. And the Santa Claus on the left is a design that Linda did. Linda, could you discuss this for a bit? Sure. Um, I really like the definition that frosted mat gives and the textures because to me, even though I use the matte finish for Santa's face, it makes him pop out even more. And everyone knows that Santa's eyes are supposed to glisten. And so I made sure the eyeball was used with frosted mat and then used the regular poly so it, the shine would be in its irises. And I did mix it all with metallics. And and, it, and you can just see that you know it, it just kind of makes his face pop out between the regular um, um, uh, poly thread and the metallics. So I, I just love it. It does great for faces for me. How many different thread types are in the Santa face? Uh, the Santa Fe's has uh, frosted mat. It has uh, regular poly thread. It has four different kinds of gold and uh, uh, an iridescent thread through the beard. I just lost my image. Am I still on? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Can hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I. Uh, it just. It just went away from from me for a minute. I got it back. So okay. that's how many different threads are in there. Okay. I just so, like to use a lot because it makes it just really makes it look custom, and and people seem to really love it when it's all different textures. It shows that you put a lot of love and work into your design. Okay, Linda. There's a question coming through from someone that that states every time I try to run the machine at 800 stitches per minute or above, um, there's a problem. Is there an answer for that? What could cause that? Um, I the only time I've ever had a break with frosted mat uh, was when I, my needle had a burr on it, and when I changed the needle, I never had another problem, um, and uh, and the only thing it did was it was shred. But I've I've I sewed this Santa face at a thousand RPM or stitches per minute, and uh, it I didn't have a problem with it at all. Okay, good to know. Um, we're going to take a look at some of the different designs that we've done now. Um, I just noticed one question up there. I just wanted to address um, the frosted mat is actually a polyester-based thread. Um, 
So just wanted to kind of throw that out there. That is one of the things that makes it, um, you're able to bleach it, you know, under the guidelines that are provided for that. I wanted to just kind of throw that out there for you. Um, so take a look at this, um, the base jump stitch out. The one on the right is done with frosted mat. Um, it's vibrant and crisp. Um, when you see it in real life, it has an amazing sense of clarity and depth. The clarity seen here is the result of the mat finish without the extra fibers of a cotton sewing thread. Without the luster and shine of the rayon or polyester, embroiders are able to achieve crisp lines and lettering. When you compare the lettering done in standard 40-weight thread, lettering becomes more legible when done in frosted mat. This feature also makes it suitable for most designs that are digitized for 60-weight or the thinner-weight thread. Creating crisp details, even the small, small scale designs, will look beautiful. This is evident in the B part of it script embroidered on the bracelet seen at the bottom. Paulette Bell has discovered a, a new uh, technique that can be a, a good area for a use of frosted mat. Paulette, could you talk about what's up on the screen now, please? Uh, yes. What I've done or what I've discovered with the frosted mat thread um, is at Brother International, we do have some designs that are called crochet designs. And those run very, very well with the frosted mat due to the weight of, it, of your thread and the thinness of it as compared to a regular 40 weight. But what it does when I stitch these designs is it gives me the effect and the look of the true crochet because it is the true crochet designs that um, people do by hand usually is they use a cotton thread. And so this frosted mat gives me the look of the cotton thread. And I've run the brother designs, the crochet design, but I've also run, uh, yesterday, I ran some designs that were freestanding lace designs. And uh, they were done by or digitized by John Deere from Adorable Ideas and Steve Wilson with Anita Good Design. And I ran theirs with the frosted mat and got the same spectacular results. And now I am running this on the Brother PR machine, which is their 10 needle machine. And I can run those at 1,000 stitches a minute with no breakage at all. And I do have to wind my own bobbins for this machine uh, for the use of these threads because I want, to look the, I want the same look on either side of the design. And uh, so I just wind those bobbins on a regular sewing machine. But they are full rotary bobbins, so they're not a standard pre-wound. I wind these myself with the thread I'm using. So, uh, I get beautiful results, and I'm very, very happy with them. I know that some of these designs will become, for me, become gifts to my friends to hang on their Christmas trees as Christmas ornaments. And I know they'll last for years because they are the polyester thread. And um, so that's my intention for these, is to be a gift. Hmm. Okay. And again, um, I've had no problem stitching with it, you know, at a 1,000 stitches a minute on the machine. So. Um, the person, whoever is having trouble with his stitching, might want to check their needles. Again, like Linda had said, it may be a burr or something like that. Um, I didn't have any problem. I was using a 7511 needle as what I read on the thread cards themselves. Okay. Have either of you? Sorry. Have ever of you, um, either of you, ever used the double thread technique? Is the question that just came in. Uh, I'm not sure what they're referring to by a double thread technique. If that's on a home sewing machine uh, with double it, threads. It or about a, yeah, with a double needle on the home sewing machine or on a, on a, com, a commercial machine? I'm not sure. That was a question that came in from one of the, the listeners. Yeah, if you want to clarify that question, um, type it in, and um, we'll see if we can help out with that. Or they may oh, be sorry. thinking that they may be thinking that they can run two threads through one needle and get double colors. Um, I have not tried that. Okay. No, I haven't tried that either. Linda, um, there's a question specifically for you. Um, 
that the Santa face looks wonderful. Uh, an attendee is writing, I can see it works well with faces. We're creating designs with animals, such as elephants and giraffes. Can I get the same effect with animals as you did with your Santa face? Yes, I think that you can. Um, I think that uh, it's certainly if you had like a face or or something where you really, really, really wanted to focus, say, on a tiger eye or, or an elephant's eye, yeah, I think it would work in, uh, very well. And if you're putting it in a safari scene, um, I think a matte elephant is colored would look awesome. And then you can make the jungle in the background very vivid with regular poly thread. I think that would look fabulous. Also, frosted matte, because it has no, no gloss to it or shine, um, I've seen that used on uh, designs for animals to resemble fur because fur is kind of a more of a matte finish than you know, than shiny, a shiny look. Well, I know this would probably is throwing in another Madeira thread, but I think using the matte in the Bermelina on an animal would be fabulous. I think you know that way you could show the fur of the animal and the face, and I just I think that would be great. That would be. The, the Bermelana is a wool blend thread that I've also seen used for animal designs, which works really well. Um, there's a technique that they use with that where they will stitch it out and then brush it with a, a, like a toothbrush to get some of the nap of the Bermelana uh, to stick out a little bit more. And that does make for nice animal designs. Just trying to look right. for some um, Paulette, what I, I embroidered, this is Nancy, I embroidered the lace flowers over there using a cutaway, wash away backing, uh, washes away real nice and easy on it. A customer had asked what we use for backing. Um, so it is a standalone lace. I used a backing that's going to wash away. Um, just wanted to confirm, um, do you do the same thing with the crochet as well? Yes, I did. Um, I used a stabilizer that uh, was, it's uh, very lightweight, very sheer. And yep. um, it's, uh, it's like a no-show mesh, but uh, water-soluble. And yep. I didn't use it. Pardon? Yeah, that's what oh. I used as well. It, it just washes oh. away real quick and easy. It's, it's real quick and easy. And what I, I actually did as well is I made sure that I was using the adequate size hoop. In other words, I'm going to run just one design at a time in the size hoop that is best accommodating for that design. In other words, I'm not going to bump it up to a very large hoop and do as many right. as I possibly can because that throws the tension off. Um, right. Yep. So I'm going to run it in a 4x4 four four or whatever for the machine. Yeah. And the same for the industrial because I've run this on my industrial machines too. I have an industrial brother and I've run it on there and it works just as well. Okay. Yep, absolutely. You know, what? the, the one thing that I like to mention too because I have promoted this to some other uh, end users is that this thread actually has quite a varied color range. In other words, you've got 161 colors, and that just absolutely floors me that that's, you know, that there are that many colors. Usually, people um, think that it's, it's going to come in black and white and a couple of other colors, but this, your range on this is really quite good. It is Paula, very good. You mentioned um, in doing the the crochet look, winding your own bobbins with frosted maps. And uh, what I did is I uh, actually set that up on my home sewing machine and uh, put it on a thread tree so I could get, you know, the height so I could wind the bobbin. And the bobbin was a parallel wind, um, and it wound just perfectly, just, you know, absolutely perfectly on a metal bobbin uh, for this machine, and it runs well. I had no problem with it. And the beauty of that was is you do pack a lot of lar uh, yardage on those cones that you've got. I think, don't you have um, close to 2,500? 2,500? 2,700? 2,700. And so yeah. that is, that's very accommodating for somebody who's going to be winding their own bobbins because um, they've got enough thread on there to run several designs plus wind your own bobbins. Um, one of the attendees is asking where they can find the crochet designs. Did you create those or find them somewhere? Oh, you know, those are brother designs. And brother designs, does. okay. Yeah, they are brother designs. And um, I think that they can go up to either contact their, their, their brother home sewing dealer because these are sold through the home sewing division. 
they'd have to contact the dealer in regards to those crochet designs, okay? Okay. okay. Uh, I see another question. Speaking of winding the bobbin, I have a Melco 16 needle XT. Can you tell me more about why the tension is thrown off in a larger hoop when using the freestanding crochet or lace design? Um, why it's thrown off? Because if you think of it as this, you're stitching um, on one side of the hoop and then you're going to be doing in the center. And when you've packed in so many stitches on one side, when it's pack those in and it gets to the next design, it just doesn't quite meet up. I like to, I much prefer getting perfect tension in a round hoop, all, you know, tension all the way around on the design and sewing it in the smallest field I possibly can for tension purposes. It doesn't then pull away from the other stitches in the design. And that's kind of true for embroidery as a whole. In general, you, you always, yeah. You always want to use the smallest hoop. Um, Right. Um, to fit the design because you get a better right. uh, stability. And that backing that was used on the crochet one more time? Oh, that was, I used two layers of a no-show water-soluble mesh, okay. Okay. All right, at this point, um, I just want to encourage people to uh, type in their questions. We're going to take a look at some more designs that were done in Frosted Mat. Um, I guess you lose a little bit of the clarity on a screen like this, but in uh, in real life, there, the colors are very vivid. I think you can see that in one here with the flowers mixing the metallic, um, with the cat mixing um, frosted matte with a, a polyester. And, and I would I would say this too, if if you know if you're trying to get a look like uh, Paulette was doing, but you want it to be real modern, y'all have neon colors as well, but you never can find in cotton. Uh, it's absolutely impossible to find. If you want it, I mean, that would be, they would be really pretty, uh, you know, used as, as, it wouldn't be traditional, but it would be very pretty uh, if you had a really modern, bright tree. Uh, so I think that's really good. I like the, the, the neon colors as well. Okay. Um, so in the on the left side with the flowers and the ivy, um, the leaves and the ivy are green, uh, frosted matte. The flowers themselves, um, the petals on the flowers are frosted matte, and we accented this one with some metallic. So you see that nice bright purple um, in the outline along the ivy, and the the vines is also outlined in metallic as well. So it was a great way to contrast. Um, we use the FS, uh, a smooth metallic 45 weight, a um, bit on the thicker side, so it really um, enhanced that metallic along with the frosted mat. Now we'll take a look at the next design. This guy, I think, is a real cutie. Uh, he, this is completely all frosted mat, but it was just um, a real funky design, um, and it was a great <laughs> way to use those bright colors um, with those cute cats. And this one here is also done in all frosted mat as well. Just a quick answer to a question. Um, we don't have frosted mat bobbins, and when Paulette was mentioning them, that was something that she wound herself. But um, which is something that you could think about about doing, but we don't sell pre-wound cross the net bobbins. Right, but you know you would use your empty cases. Um, you wouldn't want to use. Um, I did notice a question there that somebody asked if you could actually use the empty paper-sided ones. Um, you wouldn't want to use those paper-sided cores to re rewrap. You'd use either the metal or the plastic um, bobbin cores that you can purchase either locally um, or at your machine parts store. Um, and then, like Paulette said, you can wind those with your um, as your bobbin thread. Someone's asked what happened to the E and Matt. I can, I can tell you that um, we're, it's not a question of our being bad spellers. When the name of the thread came to us from Germany, um, Frosted Matt was lacking an E. 
Um, so it's a, I know it's a little disconcerting. You'll see a press release or you'll see something written about the matte with an E finish of frosted matte print <laughs> without the E. So we apologize for <laughs> that confusion that was that was delivered to us as a done deal. So we, we did not have the option of, of adding that E on to make it correct. Um, there was a question in there that said, you know, asked if frosted matte is good for um, small lettering. It absolutely is um, on those corporate logos where they have their corporate um, saying underneath it. Generally, those are in small letters. You can do those in um, 60 weight and it comes out well. And generally, you can substitute frosted matte into those designs that are digitized. So not only um, is it great for small lettering, you can achieve real clarity with those small letters like you saw on that bracelet earlier. Um, it, it just, that clear, crisp matte finish really pops out on the small lettering. So it is great yeah. for the small letters. Uh, one quick question. Uh, are we saying that frosted matte has to be on the bobbin as well? Absolutely not. Um, that was a technique that Paulette was talking about specifically um, to do with the uh, crochet. You do not need frosted mat on your bobbin. Um, another question that came in from uh, an attendee, um, can frosted mat be used for patches on motorcycle jackets? And that's something that actually there was a, a very well-known motorcycle club that came to Madeira and asked if we would be able to take a look at their leather jackets and tell them why the reds were pink, not a good color for this particular motorcycle gang. And so <laughs> they, um, they were told that frosted mat should be tried. They tested it, and frosted mat worked extremely well um, on motorcycle jackets because of being um, exposed to the sun for, for great lengths of time. So that, that is, is a, good a great idea. idea. It is. It's also with a matte finish, it's kind of a more masculine look if people are looking to avoid the, the shine or the luster of a regular thread. Well, it strikes me as being more of a distressed look, which is very popular these days. And you'll find that, you know, in embroidery as well, where they have more of a distressed look on patches and on leathers and, you know, just on garments in general. So I would think that that would be a, a great advantage to anybody wanting to do, you know, that look on outdoor gear or other types of things, meaning like on hats and, and things like that, so with that nice, you know, uh, matte look. Absolutely. The um, Also the vintage look, the stress yes. like um, Paulette's talking about, um, the vintage look for people that are looking um, for ethnic looks. It, it's got a very fashion orientation to it as well. Linda, in your experience, one of the questions is um, the major differences between frosted matte and polyester thread. Um, I can address this just based on the attributes of the thread, um, but in terms of using it, could you answer that question? Well, uh, I the difference to me is mainly the sheen, and um, and and that's why it I use it when I'm trying to to make something pop or make something fade into the background, depending on how I use the other threads. Um, it's kind of like choosing a different kind of paint, you know, when you're painting a, a, a picture. Um, you know, you sometimes you want something to have a sheen, sometimes you don't. And, um, you know, it makes a big difference in how, how the overall picture would look. And, uh, and, and, and you know, because they sew the same, and and the attributes are are similar, it just it blends right in with the picture. So, I I just the stitching tips we just we just we just love it because we do a lot of custom work, and a lot of people want something to look totally unique, and frosted mat is unique, so it's something that we use a lot. I think that's a good answer. I know that, um, like polyester, um, frosted mat can be put into a wash water that has diluted bleach in it. So it is it is a strong thread as well as being color fast. And also on our um, on on Madeira's polyester color card for our poly neon thread, the colors that are Pantone colors are matched as well to the frosted mat. So if somebody were trying to do a design that was in poly, they wanted to add some shading effects with the frosted mat, 
they'd actually be able to look at that card and get the same color numbers that were matches, the, the matte finish and the, and the shiny finish together. Right, if you were doing a stargazer lily, for example, you know, you could do, if you really wanted the color to pop, you could use the, the cream colors to do the, the frosted matte background. You could use the rayon or metallic to do the bright magenta pink. You could use, um, I, I could just see so many uses of this. It's like if you wanted to, you, with just using frosted matte and, and your favorite and metallic and the poly, I mean, if you wanted to show, my granddaughter is a real big fan fan of pigs, and I'll do matte pigs and and you know make the mud all shiny where they're all dirty or or make their their and make their snout shiny and she just loves them. So um, I just they're great on her jeans because <laughs> when she's out playing and she does all kinds of stuff, so her mom can throw it in the wash and it comes out looking just like it did when I embroidered it. So um, I, there's a lot of uses I can see. Another um, attendee has written in, is this a good thread to use on tennis terry cloth towels for tournaments? Um, I think you might have the, the nap of the terry to think about, but I think that you would agree, either one of you, that this is a good use as well? Oh, I yes, I say. think you, you would have to adjust the density you know, because of the, the toweling, but I think it would be fabulous. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with Linda. Yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, oh, I had a, uh, there was a couple of questions, Paula, that kind of go together. People are asking about digitizing and, you know, the best use for the small letters. They're asking, you know, what is the smallest size that you can do for, um, with this thread um, in, is it better to use 60 weight um, or frosted mat for the small lettering? In my business, when I do small lettering, um, I'm going to do several test sew outs first of all. But I think with the frosted mat, you get much better results because it is a thinner than the regular 40 weight polyester thread. And I would much prefer using that anyway for the small letters. And I know uh, if I said a quarter of an inch is the smallest I'd do, some, you know, there are times when I've been pushed down to three-eighths of an inch you know, to be able to get uh, as much text as possible on, you know, on a logo or something. But you know, for, uh, for the most part, mine are, my small letters are right around a quarter of an inch, especially when I'm looking at monograms on a left cuff for a guy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'm going to back off the needle size as well, or I used to for the, um, you know, when I was running the regular polyester. But since this is a little bit thinner, I can get away with running a, a 7511 still on that. Right. Um, when I'm doing a test stitch out, um, pretty much with any, with, with any thread, I do like to use a woven um, twill type fabric. I, I like to start out with something like that. Uh, what do you two like to do, um, use for your stitch out? samples for fabric? It depends upon what I'm stitching because if somebody's requesting a uh, polyester cotton blend shirt that is knit, then I'm going to test on a knit fabric, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and if I'm doing on a Carhartt jacket, I'm going to be testing on as heavy duck fabric as I can. And then if I'm doing like a, just a regular shirt, then I'm going to test on, you know, fabric that is somewhat accommodating to, you know, the shirt they're using. Um, you can tell I go to the Goodwill a lot and buy uh, just a sample <laughs> shirt and just stitch the heck out of them because oh, one of them yeah. is very expensive. Yeah. So that's what I do. But I want to use something as close as possible as what I will be doing the final, the final stitching. Right. right. That actually that makes a lot of sense. Yes. And that, that, that's what I do too. Unless, unless we're making it for a sample book, we're just making a sample book look so people can see what we've done. And we usually use felt. And, you know, and, and, and broader on that. Mm -hmm. Linda, a question that just came in, if you are uh, stitching out a design that is pre-programmed, how would you change the density on that? I would make it denser. 
I, and and I and I ha I know that's a terrible way to answer the question. Paulette can probably do this better than me, because I go into Wilcom and I it it I I, I just make it denser. I have I have more stitches, and I'm not a math person, so I'm not really good at talking about. It's always opposite than what I think it's going to be, but but um, I increase the density and. And so that there are more stitches per inch than there would be regularly if I'm doing it on something like a towel. When I did the back of this jacket with the Santa Claus, I didn't change anything. I just put the thread in. Huh. So um, I just really think it's what you're sewing on is whether you need to adjust the density or not. I know I sound stupid, but I I, I use Wilcom and I go in and I adjust the density and I, I can tell by looking at the design that there are more stitches per inch than there were before. Can you do that, Paula? Can you explain the density yeah. adjustments? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Sure. Um, because I, I remember I wrote down, I referenced um, your suggestions for the density on the thread for the frosted mat as 3.5 to 4.0 and that's in regards to points. Um, and not stitches per inch. So I might raise that just a little bit higher for some designs. But I'm also going to say stitches per inch, that's a totally different situation because then I'm running, oh, I could be running 60 stitches per inch or I'm going to be doing 65 stitches per inch. It's a different system. But for me personally, if I were going to be doing something on a terry cloth towel, what I probably would recommend or most likely recommend is one, I'm going to run up my underlay density and then I will be able to lay down the nap of the towel and then I will have made adjustments to my top density as well, but not as significant as I would if I didn't have any underlay stitching. I don't know if that makes sense to a lot of people, but on terry cloth or anything with a nap, what I'm going to do is lay down the nap with my underlay stitching and then do my top stitching over it, okay? Right. That makes sense. And then I always use a topper as well, right. a water-soluble topper. Right. Okay. I know Nancy was hoping to address the two designs that you see on your screen now. These are both done in all frosted mats, um, and I'll let her talk to you about it. Um, one of the um, Madeira associates of ours actually digitized these, and as you can see, um, we've had them up there for a little while. Hopefully, you've been able to see them well. Um, we're focusing in on them. They're very graphically, um, artistically um, created, and um, unfortunately, you know, one of the things, one of the limitations with you know looking at frosted mat on a monitor is it does limit it a little bit. Um, but I think that you can see um, the um, beautiful work digitizing wise that was done on this one. Um, the other one, the next the next image would um, actually has a lot more um, stitching in it and this is a basically a painting that was turned into a an artistic looking digitizing wise as well. Yeah, there's a real variety in what you can create with this thread. Um, as with most threads, but I think with the matte finish, you can. There's a lot more that you can do with it as well. And uh, you know what I just, Mrs. Paulette, you know what I just noticed about that is when you use the frosted matte, and I can see this, you know, on screen, is I don't have to engage as many of my shading techniques that I would have to use with a shinier thread, be it polyester or rayon, with the frosted matte. I mean, I. It just gives me its own shading technique, so to speak, with the frosted matte thread. It really does. Yeah, it does. It does, and I never thought about that either. But it it, it does make it so you don't you have to use less. You have to use less. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. It's a lot too. more subtle. Yeah. <clears throat> and you know the design you have on the left of the woman's face reminds me of a lot of the designs that the younger people are doing, um, especially some of the folks at Urban Threads. Um, mm -hmm. She has a lot of very loosely stitched designs that use a lot of those type of shading techniques. And I'm real eager to run some of her designs with some of the 
frosted matte thread samples that I've got because. Um, oh, me too. What a great idea. <laughs>
So if you had a further question for either of them, they're willing to take those questions offline. Um, again, we'll have this webinar, the recording of it, up on our website by the end of today. We'll be sending you all questions and answers that you shared with us today. So we'd like to thank you again for your time. We hope that you believe it was well spent, and we sincerely hope that you'll give Frosted Matt a try. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.